Hi, in this particular exercise, we're going to talk about the process of georeferencing. Georeferencing is the process by which we use control points that have real GIS data and real world GIS data and apply these real world GIS data to non spatial data so we can give it geographic coordinates so we can help it line up. You can see here from the, from the University of North Carolina NC Maps website, I have a really neat soil map from 1920 for Guilford County. I've saved it as a JPEG image and brought it into my GIS. You can see what I have here. I have a GIS data layer that represents Guilford County. I've got some places here also. When I right mouse click here, I can zoom to my layer and you can see the image that I have here. When we look at it in the bottom right hand corner, you can see these coordinates or these decimal degrees mean very little. These may be pixels or inches or maybe some other unit that we have to measure this here. So uh, what I want to do eventually is apply geographic coordinates to these so I can superimpose that soils map right here. The first thing we need to think about when we do this is looking for control points, points that are going to match up on both my soils and my Guilford County or my places map. An obvious place that I can look at here is the rectangular shape here of Guilford County. You notice that with the, the soils for Guilford map here, all I have is four corners here that I can use as control points. Typically when I look at road maps or things like that, I can look at junctions. If I'm looking at countries, I can look at maybe uh, prominent features, the points or whatever that we know aren't going to change over time. So this is very tricky in terms of picking out my control points. We also want to make sure that my control points are going to be spatially distributed throughout our study area here. So you can see for Guilford County, I've got four control points that are spatially distributed. If I'm looking at city, um, if I'm looking at say roads in the center of an area for an old map versus a current map or current GIS data, if I only use road maps uh, roads in the center of the area, we may see that very small areas are going to be propagated throughout larger areas, and you'll see that once we get further away from the control areas, we're going to have a much larger error based on the spatial location and the proximity of all of these different control points. So we want to make sure these control points are spatially related to each other. And we can see when I go to customize and my customize mode, I can add my georeferencing toolbar. You can see here I've already added it. My layer is going to be my soils Guilford JPEG. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to click on it. I want to fit to my display here. And first thing I'm going to do is I can zoom in right here and I can start to map these up. I can start to add my control points. In this case, I'm only going to add four control points here. Typically, the more control points that you have, the better. So I'm going to add my control points. You can see this is the corner of Guilford County here on my image. And then I'm going to line it up to the true corner of Guilford County. And you can see that it lines up right there. I'm going to go to my next corner right here. And I can use my standard toolbars right here. You'll see right here, I'm going to once again do this here, rear one here, to here. Uh -huh. We'll kind of zoom back in here. Okay, and you can see how, how far off my transformation is right here. And then once again, go from here. And then finally, I'm going to go down to this one here. Okay. Finally, add one last control point right here. Here, from here. To right here. Now, and you can see what I have here. You notice that they don't line up perfectly because the paper map that was used at the time or maybe how far off my other control points were. Here I can click on my view link table and we can look for something here called my my residuals right here. Okay, residuals tell me how far off. And you can see my transformations right here. You can see my X source, these pixel coordinates or whatever we used, and then what they're going to be transformed to for my map here. And we can look at the different order transformations that I have right here. Typically, I like to use first order, but if we get more and more control points, we can use second order transformations. If we get one or two of these points off, it's really going to warp our map right here. And it's kind of interesting what we look at here. Now, when I zoom in, I'm going to zoom into this area right here. We can see how far off they are in real life. 
we can see the town of Sedalia right here. And when I look at my places GIS data layer, yeah, this is town of Sedalia, and you can see where it is in comparison to my imagery. So some of the things that I can, and I can measure this in some sort of distance right here. Uh, it's about 0.7 miles off or so, based on the current GIS data that I have versus the current GIS um, versus the imagery that we have here. Okay, so what we can uh, what we can do here is zoom back to my layer here, and when I'm happy with everything, I can right mouse click on this. Okay, and there's lots of other things here. I can decrease, con uh, delete my control points. I can update my display. Um, what I click on is auto adjust. So whenever I create a control point, basically it's going to move the image based on that movement here. So as I go through and create more control points, so if I want to use this Sedalia as an it also as a control point, it's going to move the rest of it here. I figured just, I'll just use these four control points. But when I'm done and when I'm happy with everything, I can go to data, export my data. And now you can start to see my extent here, it isn't going to be in pixels, it's going to be in my geographic coordinates right here. You can see I've got a cell size right here. And typically I like to sell this, save these as TIFFs or sometimes we use the term geotiff because now we're going to have geographic coordinates applied with these. And when I'm all set, I can click my save button and I'll be set. And now this is going to be a georeferenced image. Ten minutes ago what we were looking at is just some image that I thought was cool that I found off the internet, brought it into my GIS as a JPEG image, and within a few minutes, as long as I have GIS data for that particular area, I can apply geographic coordinates to it and turn in GIS data that can be referenced. And now I can go through and digitize my soil layers or compare what I want to look at for uh, old soil maps versus new soil maps or whatever I want to do.